A guy just traveled from Nashville, Tennessee, all the way to here, middle of nowhere, Iowa, because I bought this 1978 Lincoln Versalius, says Sight Unseen. This is the first time I'm seeing it right now. That car has sat in that exact location on those blocks in that garage for 22 years. So I'm going to do the right thing and try to get that running and drive it 650 miles back home. <laughs> Best idea yet. Nope. My garage isn't following me. <laughs> Great. This thing is really socked in here. So before I even attempt to get this thing running after more than two decades, I gotta get this car extracted. This shed or garage or whatever this is, quite honestly, is really unsafe to be working in. And you know, if a guy is saying that, <laughs> heed the warning. It's quite possible the car itself might be the only thing holding this thing up. Over here on the bumper, I gotta keep that in mind. But the ceiling is, just really sagging in it's very low as you can see and there's a bunch of clutter in here so i'm not going to be able to root around and work efficiently in the shed plus there's no lights it's dark i'm gonna try to drag it out here in the daylight and do some work out here but first i wanted to take you in and walk around this thing and kind of show you how it's been sitting for 22 years and then i got my buddy chad on the way and we're going to try to pull this out with some chains as delicately as you can without hurting the car and without taking this building down that would be that would also be nice you know so this building's out on an old farmstead and i believe this was a part of the original home structure but you can see this wall it's got a real bad lean on it and this is what i was talking about there's contact here heavy contact and I'm thinking, we gotta be cautious with this, but if we were to move that car, I'm wondering if that's, you know, the camel that stepped on the straw or whatever, broke the, broke the straw in half of the back. And this thing, we don't wanna do that and hurt this car. But this thing was driven in here 22 years ago with suspected brake issues. That's weird, right? And this is how it's been sitting. Uh, the guy I bought it from did look in here for paperwork, documents, and we were unable to find a title, but he's working on one for me. That doesn't look good, although that does look more like a GM starter. Not sure why the hood was open, but you can see it's it's very cluttered in here, and I just don't think I would be able to work on it very well without pulling this thing out, seeing what we got. It looks to be in pretty good shape. I've never, I've never owned a Lincoln Versalius, which is a mid-size luxury car. They only made these for a couple years, three years, I think, maybe four years. We're right off a road here. Got some lumber on this side we're gonna have to move. Looks like, I don't know. Oh, that's a, that side of the car is clean. Looking good. They only made 8,500 of the 1978 Lincoln Versailleses. So this is kind of a rare old cat. This was the old timers going to town car. Unfortunately, he passed away and here it sat. So, one of our challenges is also going to be getting it off of the blocks here. Oh, yeah, I already see brake juice leaking over there on that wheel. But we got to get it off these blocks and uh, try to 
this bumper is gone. Try to pull it out of here without hurting the building or the car. Well, I walked around a little bit without being too nosy or intrusive, looking for like a come along or something. I was gonna try to, you know, like to strap the old barns, you know what I'm talking about. Here down, try to support this a little bit, didn't find anything. I can, unfortunately, I can move this whole shed. So I got a jack under here. I'm gonna jack this car up. And if the car starts to, once it comes off the blocks, move, I'm just gonna have to stand back and see what happens. Uh, the guy is gonna take the shed down anyway. So he's not worried about this. I am, and I'm worried about this a little cream puff in here too. But there's a nine inch under here, I believe, and disc brakes on the rear. Let me show you this. So that's pretty interesting. Fortunately, this car is just pretty roached. The years were not good to it. But nonetheless, we're gonna try to save on it. So let's start jacking this up. I gotta get ready to, oh, okay, it's it's separated. The building is not shifting, I don't believe. We might be okay, I'll be dipped. Nice. Well, I just need to crawl in there and get those blocks out. Guy's gotta be nimble here, quick, light on the feet. Good drive shaft. Okay. Nice old deep freeze here. This plywood is probably worth more than a car. Good three quarter inch stuff. Should probably get this out of here for that guy. Yeah. See any snakes? Oh, come here, snaky snakies. If you bite me, I'll bite you back. I don't make cinder blocks like that anymore. Oh, bear sign. Got me. Nest bits. Soda, maybe? Not sure. Okay. There we go. Now, can a guy bring it this way? See a brake line laying under there. Okay. We might could pull on that now. Doubt this is gonna work. Got a little compressor hooked up here, but I don't know. Maybe it's got a tube in it. We might get lucky. This old bias pie looks like old Goodyear. Let's see. She just ain't gonna hold wind. Now we'll try the other side. At least it's only flat on the bottom. Once we roll it, if it rolls, maybe we can fix her up. That's what they make fix a flat for. This side, that's got a little wind in it. Yeah. Wow, well that's a different tire. I wonder what the... I wonder what this one will tell us. Like this one's slowly coming up. The 
the valve stem fought me on this one here, but we got enough wind in that. That should really help steer this thing out of here. I'm gonna go to, over to the drinker side front and see what that one tells us. Three out of four ain't bad. This one's slowly taking some air. This one's gonna be a lot of work, fellas. We done bit off quite a bit. Wonder if these wheels will even roll. That's a good question. I wonder if the engine will even roll. That's another good question. Oh, my. Oh, yeah. Oh, we got keys. Oh boy, that's the mice have just really taken over that one. Thought I'd try this one again. It's been running forever, but it's starting to take a little wind. It's coming up, it's probably gonna leak down right away, but if it can stay up for 15, 20 minutes, enough for us to hook a chain on this and drag her out, that would be pretty cool. Start moving this stuff. Easy girl. My buddy Chad's let me borrow his Berbalach. Just really nice. He picked me up at the airport. This is the one went on power tour with us, but now it's got pipes and it's got vice grip garage clear coat. He put heads and a cam and all sorts of stuff. Alright. I wonder if this would just Oh, it would. Okay. I think we gotta try to pull at an angle. This big old chain was laying around, that ought to do the trick. I got a hook to this side of the frame and we're gonna drive the Suburban this way, kind of off and around to try to scooch a little bit that way. But I got to thinking it's gonna be hard to steer and I really am not looking forward to sitting in this one. It's probably the worst interior to date, I gotta be honest. It looks nice. But the smell and the mice is just overwhelming. So what I was thinking was, I wonder if I could put a jump box on this quick and just see if I can get this window to roll down. Then I can steer it through the window rather than trying to sit in it. I got this jump box, a battery, some basic parts, and a Harbor Freight toolbox. And that's it. Hopefully... We don't need a bunch more than that, but this is this is going to be a challenge. I'll tell you that much. All right. Will this jump box be enough juice straight to the cables on? I don't hear anything sizzling. Yeah, going down. Man down. There's no way the mice haven't eaten every wire in this thing. Okay, let's see. Oh, look at that. Buzzer. Dome light. No. Nope. Can't be that lucky. Wow. Door locks work. Not the, not the windows. Shoot. Oh, it works. Can't get it out of here. Our park, I should say. Oh, <laughs> there we go. All right. Chad just pulled up, so let's see if we could drag this out of here. Chad brought chicken. And bug spray. That's 10 years old, but it might work. I don't know about this one, but I'll probably use that one. And soda pop. Savior. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, you're on it. Nice and easy. All right, hold on. Tires rolling. Tires rolling. Nice. It's perfect. Now we can drag it forward a little bit. First time in daylight in 22 years. Ha! Huh. That's cool, we're blocking the road. We are definitely blocking the road. Something's dragging, probably exhaust. Here's where that car sat all those years. Well, the car is out and we just got permission to actually rummage through this stuff. And there's a couple other barns and there's some old equipment and stuff like that. So all this stuff in here is getting scrapped. Basically we were told or the vast majority of it. And I bought the car from Chad's friend. So his friend said, we can come through here and find what we want and found a shop vac. We can maybe use that to clean the car. Found some tools, I found a nice old lantern, a couple chainsaws, and we're kind of just roaming. The old timer obviously collected stuff. This is really cool. Look at this. That's neat. Make a nice uh, center console. Old school flashlight. That's really cool. Huh. Lots and lots of stuff. We found this little Super A back here behind the second barn, yeah? It was just kind of giggling here. Old timer had his pliers and you gotta have an extra valve because you just never know. I think I might throw a jump box on this. Let's see if we get this thing to pop off. Jump box, engage. Look at that. What does that mean? I don't know. Get the fuel on. Well, I don't think he's got a shut off on that. No. Okay, well, just in full send. She's gonna go. Yes! Look at that! Ha! Runs good. Old tractor? Runs. That was probably his good tractor. I'm not sure when he passed, but it doesn't look like it was sitting that long, but well, it runs. He can go cut some grass now, whatever he wants to do. Back to the Lincoln. We got to start with the basics. We got to make sure this engine turns over. We'll pull the air cleaner off, see if the fuel make it happen or stuck, and just kind of work, start working our way through it. That's an awful long time to sit. Thankfully, it was kind of on concrete ish in there and that's the better of the scenarios when they sit but let's see if we get this thing fired up well we can finally get a closer look 
I don't, the smell on this one, guys, is like a cast iron bathtub full of mold and mice. I mean, it's terrible. I can't even, we're just letting the door sit like this. That's probably as close as we're going to get to the interior. But we can actually see the engine compartment. And surprisingly, this should be a 302, by the way. This came with like 135 horsepower, believe that or not. And if you got the big engine upgrade, the 351, you got 138 horsepower. So, you know, another is that 49 cubic inches gets you three more horse. That's pretty good. Solid upgrade. But it doesn't look like much has been chewed on, which is, I don't, I'm having a hard time understanding that. We could probably get, why don't we just delete on this? I don't think we, I think we need this where we're going, so to speak. Oh, okay. As far as the body goes, there is some rust. Bottom of the doors, there's some there starting. Got a little bit of weight reduction back here. We got the angry wasp turtles or whatever they are. Mud nest daubers. Paint faded. This is too bad. I don't know what. Just age, I guess. I imagine that this side got some sun. Peeked into that garage, you know? Same thing here. This is that elusive, sought after barn dust. See that? It's thick. Automatically increases the value of your vehicle 37.4%. I'm probably going to fill a coffee can full of that stuff. We already saw the power windows, power locks. Uh, 72,000 miles. I'm gonna go ahead and say right now that that's original. Pedal, four wheel disc. That's pretty cool, I didn't know that that was a thing. Basically the paint on this side is just shot. It's very LTD-ish looking as a whole unit here but it's going to be interesting to see how well it cleans up obviously just washing this is going to dramatically change the appearance but i wonder if we could put some polish on it the top might be in somehow decent condition there's really no dents or anything like that it's got a tarp in the back seat the old color had some heartburn. Got the antacids just ripping. Four thirty is when the battery finally went down. But this thing was really nice back in the day. Chad's doing a little rooting around. He came back and said, "Fixed. Got everything you need." <laughs> Pulsar, super bright. Some grease and might even got some battery. Well, we could test this right now. No, that's deader than Elvis, unfortunately. Yeah, but I got a different one. Okay, so we got to get going here on this. Well, the biggest hurdle for a guy is always the first one. Is this engine even going to rotate or is it locked up? Moisture easily gets in the exhaust and I see the oil caps missing on this it can get down through the carburetor a lot of different ways and gets these ring ridges in there sometimes the valves stick and, but if this rotates that's a huge victory mouse nest in here it's not a good sign not a good sign at all eviction notice get out of here you little devils I don't know. Deal with that later. Okay. Carbs locked up. That's not surprising. I think it's the it is. It's the accelerator pump. Not the throttle blades. 
Here's what we got again. I don't see, even though they were living in the air cleaner, they didn't chew on any. They just must have been full up with the interior soup can. Anywho, this is moving, but you see there in the accelerator pump, this is stuck. So that's gonna have to come off, unfortunately, which I'm expecting that. I'm also expecting we're gonna have to do brakes and bearings and who knows, but she only needs what she needs. I don't wanna go crazy here. I just wanna get this car back home. So what I'm gonna do on this is probably just take a croissant wrench right off the charging where they're there. Apply some pressure to the belt and see if we can get this engine to rotate. And if that's not working, then we'll jump down and put a wrench on it. All right. Oh, there it went. Yeah, it's rotating. Wow. I gotta be honest, I did not expect that. That is great news. Oh, that just saved us so much time. Engine turns. Well, the engine rotates. That's a big part of the puzzle here. And great news that it spun so freely, I have pretty good confidence that there's nothing in the cylinders themselves, like rodents or water or anything like that. Hopefully, eventually we'll come back and throw a battery in it and then hook up that lightning cube and twist the key and see if it spins and how it sounds. We may have to pull the plugs and lubricate it and do all that stuff. Haven't decided yet. I'm gonna move on to this carburetor, get that off. I can't get a kit for this right now. It's gonna to have to be really delicate and just try to get it to function slightly. And then uh, we can put that back on. We get a good look down the intake. That'll also give us an indication on the health of the engine. I can see into the valve cover baffle that looks pretty clean so we might have got really really lucky i just don't know why it was stored with the hood up life's mystery I wonder what garth brooks is doing today he's probably hanging out with friends in little places okay yeah If you look close, you could definitely see where the butterflies were welded with gunk. Well, we got those cracked, but I'm gonna take this accelerator pump off gently, try to get this moving, and get this all lubricated back up. Squirt some cleaner in here. It really doesn't look that bad, if I'm being honest. Well, a guy somehow got the accelerator pump out in one piece little trick i use for that when they're that dry and brittle so I just soak them down with any sort of penetrating oil let them sit for a little while and they'll slowly start to get some flexibility back and i work that off now i'm just soaking this down so i can get that pin moving freely once again and then i can put this back together spray it up a little bit cleaned it up a little that's looking pretty good over here on the intake equally good news that looks good looks really good well that's off I got to clean up some of this stuff that could cause a fire oh we got an oil leak or something weird and uh, get this cleaned up just a little bit. We'll get that plot back on and we can move on to testing spark. This unfortunately has the legendary Ford Never Spark box. And if that is bad, we are in trouble. I ordered one, but I think it's a six wire and that's probably a three wire, could be a four wire. Who knows how many wires? I don't know why they changed them, but that's what's running this lightning whirler is that box so that could end up being a nightmare finally got these two separated with my hammer also known as a ratchet there is a bunch of corrosion in there and it's corrosion in here and what i really need is a file and i don't have one but don't panic guys just grab a needle nose pliers open it up and there's your file so i'm going to work this through here a few times 
clean this up a little bit and then lubricate this to make sure that this shuttle moves back and forth easily because the only return pressure it has is a light spring and that's pretty much it so we got to make sure that it moves nice and easy in there again I don't have a kit so I'm being as delicate as I can I just wanted to get in here and make sure that the needle is in fact moving and it is it looks pretty clean in there too so we're gonna put this back together got a couple small tears in it Hopefully that's going to hold up fine. Also, I accidentally broke this off, but we're just going to run fuel line back over to the steel line. Guy's getting ready to put the fuel make it happener back on. Realize I'm missing a stud and some nuts. And then, you know, I spent 37 minutes looking for that. I crawled on my hands and knees and backtracked and found it. Down in here, I dropped them down by the lightning cube here. So I'm gonna go ahead and rip all this stuff off, get this out of here, toss a new one in. We gotta do it at some point anyway. Get that stud back, then I can go back to get that fuel make it happen or on. We don't know if we have fuel delivery, but at least we're 26.9% confident that if we get fuel there, it should do something. What's this now? deleted that's what it is yeah it's, oh it's got to go in an old never start extreme yeah okay oh. there it is i knew it all along helps yeah. extremely specific reason the guys using this one here It was quite literally the cheapest one available, and it's got to go handle. Beep. A lot more dainty, but don't worry. She's a superstar. We can redo the fire test, I guess. Oh, yeah, the, all the doors are open. Buzzer works. That's nifty. Actually, then I'll leave this off because the uh, dome light works. I don't want to drain on it. Okay, what was I doing? Fuel make it happener. Brand new, rejetted, performance spec, flow tested, you name it. And by that, I mean I just did absolutely nothing. Basically, I just sprayed her down with some juice. Yeah, that'll work. Okay. Boop. Here. At least I went back on him. That's. That's something. This Lincoln emblem that keeps going right directly into my belly button is about to get deleted. <sighs> I wonder if that's hooked to the horn like some of the other fancy rigs. I don't know. I just don't. I didn't get any belts. And these are rotted. Be something if the AC worked, wouldn't it? Would. Be even better if the cruise works. Well, fuel maker is back on, all buttoned up. I don't think I broke anything, believe it or not. <laughs> That's a first. It's time. We turned it over with hand. It rolled very easily, which is great news. I'm going to hook up the Lone Wolf 6000. Got the steel me junction right over here conveniently by the battery. So if you ever want to hotwire one of these, just pull out the plier, piece of cake. Dodge has something similar. One to the start, one to power. Theoretically, when I pull this trigger, it should fire the starter, which I don't even know if it's in here. <laughs> and uh, turn the engine over. And we could test starter, relay, all that stuff in one shot. And if this works, I'll go in the car and actually turn the key and see if that works. All right, here we go. Yes. Okay. I'm gonna do it again. Yeah, I can hear we ripped the exhaust off. Earl? Looks bad. 
So that's good. You know, we'll pretend we didn't look at that for right now. But there's no water in it or anything like that. Let me go in the cabin and turn the key. It'd be great if we didn't have to rub rusty spoons together or jam a knife in the dash or something like that. Okay, let's see. Oh. <laughs> Gotta unhook the Steel Me 200 here. Plug this back in. Don't bring the thunder, just turn it over. Yep. All right. We're making progress here. Now that she's rolling over good, we could turn it with the key, we could turn it with the Lone Wolf 6000. Gonna move on to lightning. We gotta have sparkles, two of the sparkle lighters to make combustion and all that stuff. Instead of testing everything in here, we're just gonna put a tester in line, test the spark right out of the gate. If we got spark, that's great, you know? Nope, not gonna happen. If we don't, then we can start working backwards and eventually come to the conclusion that the never spark box is bad. <laughs> That's weird. Key is in, you can probably hear it, and on. This is hooked back up. This is in line here. We should see some sparkles coming out of that. Let's see what we got. Nothing. Great. Here we go, we're down a river, looking for a creek with five paddles. And uh, it's not, it's got, we got rapids, could be rocks. You know, when you talk about Ford's ignition systems. I'm gonna start with the basics. Let's pop the cap off of the lightning whirler. Let's check the coil, and then we'll start working. Maybe we just got a bad coil. Well, that'd be nice, just a bad coil for once. That's all, I, I just, one time! Just give me a bad coil. <laughs> Ate a bug. Now the guy's got this bad boy popped off. And yeah, yeah, really clean. I don't know. I don't think we ain't gotta do nothing there. She only needs what she needs, you know. I don't think there's any issues with that. The reason I always check these is I've had old timers park their rigs They'll pull the cap, take the rotor out, put the cap back on, anti-theft. It's actually a really smart idea. But you just gotta look at these things. We just gotta work through it. Next is the coil. And I noticed this, remember the hood was up there doing something. This is unbolted. So did they already know they didn't have sparkles and they was starting to dig through this? I mean, it makes sense, I guess, but I'm going to get that coil out and we'll meter that up. We're going to take the digital meter here, flip her over to horseshoe mode, put it on your lowest setting, like 200 for example. We want to see one and a half to three and a half across these. And then through here, we want to see, you know, six to nine-ish for this old of a coil. Of course, it depends on your vehicle type. Oh, there's oil leaking out of the center there. I'm going to meter this out quick, see if it's any good. Okie dokie. Doing meter things with the with the light and the cam. Come on now. Give me a number. Give me a number. Hmm. That's interesting. 198, 75, 4, 2. Now it's holding at 2. That was kind of weird there for a second. Twirl her up to 20. 8.6. Holding. 8.67. Well, that's pretty good. I'm not totally convinced this is the issue. So we're gonna move on and make sure that we've got power here. Might clean that terminal up just a little bit. 
We gotta make sure we've got some voltages there. Well, we're definitely getting voltage there. So that's not the issue either, which leads us to, yay, yay. Good job, Ford. <laughs> well, a guy got to rooting around in here, you know, and, uh, oh, found a bunch of dielectric grease on the connectors. It's original grease, but it was there was so much of it. I cleaned off some of those pins, uh, checked, and now I'm getting a 12 volt and nine during crank. So I think that was the issue, hopefully. Uh, but we'll test it here, see if we get a blink. Yep. Yes. Okay. We have spark now. <laughs> Guy's got some true fuel. I know it's just faster than mixing it up and getting a jug and all that. It's 40 to one. So basically it's got a little bit of two cycle oil in it. I do not like just fogging these things down with brake cleaner or carb cleaner. It's the absolute worst thing you can do to an engine, especially one that's been sitting. If it doesn't start and you have all that stuff, you could be washing the piston rings and all that. This has some lubrication help out the top end and everything like that. Uh, we don't have a fuel line hooked up yet, but I'm just gonna dump it right down the app. That was way too much, so I'm gonna put a little more in. There we go. Should pull this trigger. If all goes well, it'll light off for the first time in 22 years. Bring in the thunder! <laughs> Nothing! Yes! Something! Yes! I was concerned there for a second. Tons of blow by. Jump box time. Oh, that's good news. Oh, we might have a shot. 650 miles. Ain't nothing to sneeze at. Try to do this, it'll probably just come right out the bottom of the bowl there. Way too much. It's definitely flooded. But don't worry, them rings will come around maybe. <laughs> yes. Oh. Wobble pop celebration, I think. Well, the car's a runner, the big challenge is out of the way. I think this is where I'm supposed to yell, let's go. But I don't really know where everyone's going, if I'm being honest. Plus, shouldn't it be getting full? where everybody's going, so I think I'm gonna stay. Let's stay. So anyway, we're gonna move on to a fuel system here of some kind. Now, normally I would just pipe in a jug or something like that off here on the side, but we need fuel capacity 650 miles home in this boat. You know, we need a lot of fuel. I'm gonna go straight to the fuel tank in the rear. We're gonna dump in some gasoline, hope that it comes up okay-ish up here, you know what I mean? And it, the tank is empty, it's bone dry. So there's a good chance that it might just have some sediment in it and not a ton. And uh, I'm gonna put on just a stick of line up here and we'll fire the engine up again and see if the pump's gonna pump. And we'll just pump it off to the side and flush that line 
until we get some fresh fuel, assuming the pickup screen isn't plugged or rotted off or broken. And then if it works, we'll plug that in and away we go. Got some good Iowa corn gas here. Hopefully the tank doesn't have a hole in it. I didn't even crawl underneath this thing yet, so. Or the fuel line exists. That'd be nice. Just got this plumbed in here. And we're gonna let it lay off the side. And if we're lucky, it's gonna pump fuel. We need that tank, hopefully. Fuel pump is way down in there, of course, somewhere. If we need to splice in, that's that's dandy. Use my Gatorade bottle. Popped a hole in there there. So I think we should be able to bottle feed this thing if we can get her fired up again. Keep it running long enough to try to pull fuel. All right. Let's see if we get this thing fired again. spark all of a sudden again. I think it was this connector again. Let's try this. Oh, for Pete's sake. I lose spark. It comes back. I lose it. Comes back. Last spark. Well, I've tried and tried and tried to get fuel from the tank through the original pump down there and it's not working. I even tried to prime the pump and everything. It's just, it ain't gonna go. So I think I'm gonna put this clicky clacky in line just over here, somewhere where there's electricity so we can add fuel to that. And we'll run it out of the gas jug for now, just so we can get, you know, we gotta get this thing idling for more than a few seconds at a time. We gotta worry about head gaskets and rear main seal and intake gaskets and you know, thermostat and is the rad gonna leak or I think it's got juice in it but yeah I can see some down in there but it hasn't been pressurized in two decades so I want to get this running here and idling and we'll do it that way it may end up being permanent we'll see clicky clacky that's clicky clacking off the Milwaukee battery down there that should be filling the bowls. We'll see if we can light this thing off again. You can hear the ball filling. Let's see if we get any squirter action. Not really hearing anything. It's a little more, a little more help, maybe. <laughs> Sounds pretty good. The bell train isn't clacking, but 
boy, there's a lot of blow by. A lot. Brake lights on, of course. Oh, we got radio. That's a first. Oh, window came around. I gotta get this down now. So I also noticed the uh, lever's busted. Can't get out of the rig. again not even a not even a wince drive nothing oh no right now we've got no transmission that's fine we don't always need them I think that's a first for us I think about it. It's one of the benefits to trying to find manual transmissions. As long as the clutch isn't seized, it's usually in pretty good shape. However, this automatic transmission is not automagical. So I'm going to shut it down right now because there, that fluid didn't look good. We're just pumping it all through that thing. Now we gotta start thinking, is this even worth <laughs> if it goes that far, pulling the transmission on this? I don't, I don't know about that. I just don't know. Good news is it runs pretty good, you know? That's neat. Well, the sun's getting ready to peek behind the hill here. We had a really good day though. I mean, part of the challenge I thought was just getting it out of the shed barn garage thing without that falling over. And at the end of the day, we have a running Lincoln, but transmission issues. Oof. So I got about an hour drive to my buddy's house. I'm going to go throw my earth pounders up, wet the back neck, throw some groceries down the neck. 
be back tomorrow morning early. We'll change the oil in the engine so we can run it longer. And then we're gonna have to pull the pan on this transmission. And maybe a fluid change and a filter will help. Unlikely, very, I don't know. You ain't getting 650 miles with four neutrals. <laughs> Tell you that much. See you in the morning. Well, it's the following evening, unfortunately. That's when I could get the filter and the gasket and the accoutrements for the shift machine and the 1978 Lincoln Versailles. There. And that's where I've decided to start, is with the transmission fluid and filter. Hopefully that resolves our shifting issue. Right now we've got four neutrals. It runs, but it ain't, it ain't going nowhere. I got a long way home, you know what I mean? And I think I've decided if we don't have a transmission, that's probably the end of it for the Lincoln. Now, could we spend a day or two finding a good used transmission at an okay price and going to get it and coming back here and spending another day tearing this out and putting it in and crossing our fingers and hopefully that works? Sure, of course, absolutely, but I just, you know, it just, you know what I mean? I just don't think that's in this car's future for me personally, but it runs, it's out of the shed, whether it goes on and lives another life or someone uses the 302 and the nice rear and the disc brakes, I don't know. I don't know what, what that chapter holds yet, but I've got her jacked up here. We've got jack stands underneath of it. Let's go underneath, drop this pan. We're gonna go ahead and put a new filter in. We're gonna put some fresh fluid in. I think while we're at it, we're gonna put brand new clutches in this thing because it's got water in it. And by clutches, I mean stops, slip. Yeah, I need that. Yeah, a lot. Uh, lubricates valves for proper shifting. Yeah. I need that too. Renews worn bands. I need all that. So, there we go. And I'm not sure why, but I ordered rubber brake lines for the front. <laughs> I guess I was being optimistic. Okay, well anyway, let's get under this, get this pan off, see what we got. Not quite sure, but that was plugged. Thankfully it just rotted off. Also some more Ford engineering. You know, just hang that off of there. That'll, that'll fix that. Anywho, I've got the bolts off on the other side. Now I've got to take this side off and then figure out how to get the front side off because that's where you want to run the exhaust right up against, you know. And we can get that pan down and see what we got going on. Under here is what you would expect. Also, this might be the fuel line right here. And uh, that just fell on my forehead, quite literally. So, you know, there's the issue with that. Now we know. Well, we have our answer. That's the transmission is, she's gone. I mean, there's no way in any planet that that, it survives this. So, but I mean, we're still gonna put a filter in it and fill it up because there's always the, you know, because there's a mini X in a horse trailer. So it might work. <laughs> well, I dumped out my muffin pan and uh, cleaned it up a little bit in vain, but I need out of that thing now. We're gonna throw a new fill tray on this puppy and top her off with those brand new clutches and give her a rip anyway, cause you just never know. Well, looking at the pan and the fill tray there, there's a 36.49% chance 
that it was just fluid starved. However, well, 22 years sitting, the ATF turned into chocolate pudding. And, you know, it was just sitting in the pan. Plugged up the filter as well. So really, there wasn't anything circulating. So with a good flush here, I am hoping, maybe, we can get some line pressure out of this thing and we get gears. Wouldn't that be something? 650 miles is really starting to create, it's getting, it's, it's coming up. That lawnmower is looking pretty good <laughs> at this point. Well, as you can see, a guy is out of daylight. But nonetheless, I'm still putting some blood juice in this thing. Got to see if the shift machine shifts. Technically, tomorrow, not only should I be on the road, I should be about halfway home. So, <laughs> everything's fine. Okay? But it would be nice to know what's going on with this machine tonight so I can make preparations on how I'm, how I'm getting home. I guess. Also, I have found all three barn cats. There's a butterscotch one, black one here without a tail, and this cool looking multicolored one with one eye. I think they sleep in this car actually. So that's pretty neat. Anyway, just waiting for this to drink up. We'll fire this thing back up. And <laughs> with a little luck, we'll have some gears. Got it fired up again. That's that spark tester. I'm gonna let it warm up a minute and then I'll try the gears. Well, she's warmed up a little bit. Can't believe that accelerator pump works. All right, gotta throw in reverse. The grabs neutral. Take a break. Throw it drive. The hope here again is there's so much put. Wasn't making line pressure. Let's see what happens. I actually have a pretty good feeling about this. Reverse. Yes. Oh, it grabbed. I threw it in neutral. Try to drive the more important one. There it went. Reverse. Drive. Reverse. Drive. Reverse. If there were concrete steps, I would dance up them and do the. I don't, I don't know what he says. But he gets to the top, king of the world or something. Not quite sure. Anyway, well that's pretty neat. <laughs> we have a transmission, but we have no daylight. So that's gonna do it for this day. Unfortunately, it was kind of shot, but all in all a victory. I'm gonna pack up for tonight, figure out a way to feed these cats, load up the Suburban. I'll be back bright and early tomorrow morning. Hopefully, I guess we're on to brakes, trying to figure out brakes, and unfortunately I can't get any hardware, so. I don't know. Hopefully we can get one of them working. I sh hard to say. Well, good morning once again from beautiful Iowa. Weather's been fantastic. Today's the day we gotta figure out what to do with this car. I've been scrambling trying to find brake parts and it's, it's all special order. So I'm gonna go ahead and just pop the cap off the brake master cylinder over there. See what we got. It's probably empty. Fill it full of juice. Hope the pedal moves and see what happens. Now remember, we were told when this was parked and up on blocks there that it was parked for brake reasons. Uh oh, maybe they had the same issues finding parts. I don't, I don't know. Okay, let's dig in. Captain Salad Bar. Salad Bar actually sounds pretty good right now. It's been a long time since I went to Good old fashioned salad bar. This was already halfway cracked off by the hoose. Oh yeah, I just went. <laughs> well, there's some juice in one and a little juice in the other even. 
Well, let's see what happens here. Well, we gotta pump the brakes. I guess we should see if the power seat works, because if it doesn't, I don't even want the car. That means the power locks work, the power windows work, power seat works. Oh, it even goes down. It's crunching something. My skeletons. Oh, this one is bad fillers. It's real bad. Oh, brake pedal. Nothing. Nothing some more. Still nothing. Well, is it pumping fluid or is the master cylinder just not working? I don't know what it's doing or not doing, I guess. We might have to get tires on this. So let's see if it actually rolls. Because then if it rolls, we could try to stop the vehicle. You know what I mean? Yeah, nothing's really changed. I bet the master cylinder's probably junk. Guy's gonna fire it up here. Even though it's on flats, we'll throw it in gear and see if we can determine if the brakes are doing anything. I'm not quite sure where the pedal's supposed to be. Cold start. He's not on. <laughs> I knew that, I was just seeing if you guys were paying attention. Three cold starts. Come on now. Look at that. Need more fuel. Oh, just like a sewing machine that's taken apart. <laughs> See how it rolls. So what I'm going to do is hold the brake, and I think it's stopping it. Okay, neutral drive. Ah, I think there's a hint of brake. This is unbelievable. Come on now, you're telling me you're going to sit there and tell me something's on fire, isn't it? Blink twice. There's a fire. There's a lot of smoke. Shift. I think I got front brake, but no rears. <laughs> Horn works. This is crazy. This is crazy. 650 miles. We may be attempting it here shortly. Yahoo! Ooh, good screwdriver. It's a, it's a standard. Well, fellas, I gotta be honest, I woke up a little discouraged this morning because I thought for certain there is absolutely no way the brake system was going to function. That's actually, I'm trying to think, it's probably a first for us, right? Especially it's sitting this long, 22 years. Well, let's go ahead and change the oil. Obviously, it's earned that. Transmission is shifting, the engine fires right up. We've got just front brakes, but that, you know, that's 50%, you know, that's pretty good. Let's get this front end up in the air, change the oil, and while we have that up, we'll go ahead and pop these front tires off. I've got four tires here that I had shipped ahead, and we'll try to figure out somewhere. There's a bunch of small pop-up towns here and there. Getting those mounted, then we can get the rears on. And uh, I think there's a town called Tipton or Tiffin, Tiffany, Williamsburg, Petersburg, or something. They gotta have a tire shop. So I'm thinking. So we've run this enough now. Everything should be in the bottom of the pan. There we go. Get this changed. Definitely get that thing out of there. I also cut the fuel line right here, just in case magically 
it starts pulling fuel while we're driving. We don't want that spraying all over the engine up there. So I cut that to prevent that from happening. Pretty wild steering set up here. It's a uh, kind of a rack and early rack and pinion kind of system. Pretty cool. Got the fram out from below there. And we got, uh, of course, a Wix now. Right the date and mileage on them. Fortunately, I didn't pack a marker. Maybe the odometer works, nope. Anyway, up here, we need a specific oil for this 302. And that's this Shell Rotella diesel oil, T4. It's got all the vitamins and minerals and zinc, phosphorus. We need, you know, and then for the fifth quart, we're gonna use this here. Uh, it works with the Warren engine. High mileage stuff. Yeah. So I'm gonna pour that into this jug, shake it up, and then it'll go down the yap here a little bit easier. Don't just try to squeeze this stuff in. You'll be there for 36.7 minutes. Go into here. Boom. Garbage pile. I'm gonna shake this up like Shakira. I'm just kidding. No one can do that. But well, attempt. You know. This one's sun faded. It was, must have been laying there on the floor in the parts store for 38 years. Oil change complete here. And got two front tires off and down to the local tire shop. Unfortunately, I had to destroy the hubcaps because there's screws that held them on and there's no way those are coming off. So I had to smash it off with a hammer. I found over here. And once we get those two on, we'll do the rear. Right now, I'm trying to get this fancy dancy shop vac going. You know, the old mouse sucker. This one's a 3000, it's a 20 gallon. And we're gonna run this through here, but we got a bad extension cord. Kai was nice enough to lay out some cords here that go back to an old house. And I think we got a bad cord, but I looked in here earlier. There's one in the trunk. Let's see if that one works. Normally I start in the trunk, but I was terrified when I got here, to be honest. Right there. <laughs> Grab her. I want to reach in there now. Yeah. The snakes. Bite me. Probably still is a snake in there somewhere. Let's go. The old timer insulated the Insulated the floor. We'll probably pull all that junk out of there. <laughs> Definitely some heavy mouth smell in there as well. Hold on. Okay. There you go. We got free jumper cables. Don't mind if I do. Really nice like a rug. Oh. 58,000 pounds of my species. Oh. He must have got cold easily. Had that trunk floor just insulated. The mothballs really worked. No. Oh, I did. Original sparage. I gotta get a mask on. I'm gonna, I can feel it entering my body. See up in the corners there? Yeah, I'm gonna scoop it into this milk crate and then run the vacuum through here. Try to get some of that out anyway. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh. 
see what this big dog can do. Oh, yeah. Look how well the trunk turned out. That ain't bad. And with some actual shampoo or cleaning stuff, I think I would come all the way around. Working my way into the cabin, starting on the captain's side. And just gonna get it as clean as I can and try to wipe some of these seats down. I got some cleaning wipes. Got the seat moved all the way forward, you know, showing off the electric seats right now. Get this done back here. Kind of got that cleaned up pretty decent there. And hopefully we can keep this from cycloning going down the road. Over here digging through the glove box. Found one of them. Might be some more up there, we'll see. The guy's been working on her for quite a while, but look at the difference. It's just wild. Seats are going to have to come out and carpet's going to need to be shampooed at minimum or preferably replaced to get the urinal cake smell out of here. But let's just go back in time here a little bit. When I first cracked this door open and peeked in and look at the difference. Now it's looking pretty good. The smell is still terrible, but at least I could sit in here without vomiting in my mouth three times. This is going to be my fuel setup here. When we run back into town, I'm going to get some duct tape or something, and basically we're just going <clears> to <throat> run some fuel line here, and got to find a way to get it in to the engine compartment here. It's literally taken half a can of brake clean to get this paint clean, so tape will stick to it, but man, this thing is going to clean up pretty good, I think. I got the hose. Routed through here, I knocked out the cold air intake thing, pipe. Still gonna bring wind in, but we'll run it up underneath, tape it like three times here, pinch it between the mirror and the pillar. We'll put the pump in here. They're better pushing fuel than pulling. And then also I could try to figure out how to wire it in and I can control it right here on and off. I might just, I might just follow come off the battery and just follow this or we might pull it in there not sure Chad got the rears knocked off for me that caliper piston is shot you can see all the old fluid in there stained but they got the front two done so we're gonna go down and drop these off grab some duct tape I might get some leather cleaner for the seats just so we have a different smell in there and we're getting there. We're getting close to maiden voyage time after 22 years. We're back with tires. We got a oh, go hand cooks, uh, Kenner just, I don't know, it's, they're pretty cheap. Oh, see if I can get these mounted on. Get this thing rolling. Seats are looking great. I just hit them with some, uh, it was like Justin boot leather care. But it cleaned the seats even more. The smell is still terrible, that's fine. Anyways, working on the fuel system here. One of the problems we're gonna have is when you buy this stuff on a roll, well, anytime, there's all these shapes, right? Well, when that hose goes in this jug, it curls up. And from experience, having done this 419 times, that's not good. You're not getting the full capacitize. So I rooted around outside here a little bit, and I found a broken piece of, uh, fishing pole here perfect so I'm gonna zip tie this to my fuel line like this we're gonna keep it nice and straight and I'm gonna make it to where the fishing rod is just a little bit longer than the fuel line so we can drop this straight in the fuel lines not gonna get stuck to the bottom of the tank or anything like that and we can maximize the capacity that way we're scraping eye sights in the rear window so I can see when I'm getting pulled over here. And the fuel system is done. We're going to run that on a drill battery. The plan is to get over to Chad's house. He's like, um, it's like 50 miles. Probably about that, yeah. And then we can work on it a little bit further. Got the air cleaner assembly all back together. Uh, put a new 
air filtration element in there. Almost forgot this. Got the ignition hooked back up. Should start by a key, but that battery, I think, is dead from cranking on it so much. We'll see here in a second. Got pretty much everything packed up. Got to just clean up the site a little bit more. Some of my parts and pieces and whatnots. Fuel lines taped up, zip tied to the mirror. Front windscreen is nice and clean. By the way, not a rock chip in this thing that I could see so far. That's pretty awesome. Getting close to driving this thing. By the way, check this out. That's a factory option. It's RPO U55. But anyway, here we go. Come on. Oh, I gotta run the fuel pump. <laughs> now we're now we're cooking. Look at that. Must have been parked in the winter. It was on hot. Power steering works. Wow. Well, it is officially time for this car to move for the first time under its own power in 22 years. What I'm going to do is try to back up out of here. There's a lot of stuff that are dangerous for tires. Danger. Danger. And then uh, we're going to cruise the back roads, like they say, over to Chad's. We can. It's like we're going to pressure wash this, guys, before we take off. Because right now this says. <laughs> Pull me over. You know what I mean? Here we go, reverse. We're moving. Oh, I forgot about the exhaust thing. But nonetheless, we are moving. Wonder if that would just delete itself. I go forward. Brakes. Nothing to write home about. Forward. This is what we got going on here. This big thing laying down here. I think I'm going to cut it probably right there just because it's easier to reach. And then I got a rubber hanger back here. Got to delete on that. And then there, you can probably hear I'm loading a trailer of scrap metal in the background. We'll just go toss this on there and uh, help them out a little bit. Okay, exhaust off. Here we go. One more brake check. Yeah, sure. While we're rolling, we're doing the thing, I guess. Second gear. Second gear. How about second gear now? shake this thing down and then we'll assess this. Ooh, look at that boat. Sea Spirit! I wonder if it's for sale. Does this have a good? Oh, 
better to the first fuel stop. Cars, you know, it's running, it's missing a little bit. I did dump some barium in that jug in there, so it's chewing on that while we drive. That'll help clean up the sparkulators, combustion chamber, all that. What I really need to do is give this an Italian tune up or get it out on the highway and just let this thing rip. Now get all 130 horses galloping. Uh, brakes pull super hard to the left and let off and it swerves you to the right. Radio still works, wipers were working. Get this, the cruise control works. However, brake switch wants to be faulty. Chad's following me, he said, I don't have brake lights. And it's coming up to a stop line back there. It's hitting the brakes. Nope, cruise didn't kick off at all. It just said, oh, we got a hill. It tried to downshift, which just meant it was wandering between three gears. So you have to flip the cruise off manually. So the brake switch is bad, which is probably why the brake lights on. But it's driving okay. A little concerned about the transmission still because the one to two is soft and the two to three takes forever. And you gotta delicately pedal it to get it to shift in the third. But hey, it's going down the road. At this point, we've got a victory. Any farther than this is just the cherry on top of the pie. Cherry pie with cream on it, on the top. <clears throat> Okay, let's keep going. <sighs> yeah. Well, went to pull out of here. Battery's dead. Ain't charging good. No spark again. Chasing and chasing and chasing and trying to figure out. <sighs> yep. So here we go. That's, we made it, you know nine miles <laughs> great there's a little part store just south of here about six miles closes pretty soon actually i think it might be the ignition coil i'm getting some really odd inconsistent readings across the primary coil so we're gonna buzz down there thank goodness Chad was following me uh, we're gonna buzz down there check that out and see if we can get one quick throw that in see what happens well replaced a couple fittings Took that terrible plastic thing off, fittings there, and uh, ignition control module. When you know it. And we're gonna see if we can head home. I'm just not gonna shut it off at this point. Or not home, I guess, the Chad's house is what I mean. So, oh, and new coils in. back to my friend's house turn it off try to start it again sure enough no spark I don't I don't know I'm gonna have to do some thinking but until then we got the pressure washer drug out we're gonna go ahead and give this thing's first wash in 22 plus years let's see what we got going on underneath all of this actually I should scoop this off put it in a bucket you know put it on evil bay that's a ridge barn dust right there. Well, I'm interested to see what it's going to look like. So fire it up, get some soap on this thing, some high pressure. Probably going to lose some paint, but that's okay. Just want to clean it up enough to travel, basically. Never used one of those foam, you know, cannon shooter hunters. You know, let this soak for a minute. It's already, unfortunately, it's going to take a lot of this paint off. It's just, you know, there's no way to avoid that. I'll try to minimize it. I think this top, somehow, some way, is going to survive.
So we just got the link on and the garage here. We got side lights. I gotta show you something. Brake lights started working out of nowhere on the way home. Cruise control works. And check this out. You're not gonna believe this, so I just had to show you. 52 degrees, ice cold air in this old car. <laughs> that is crazy. It's the coldest AC I've felt in a long time, I'll tell you that. So I wanted to try to address this fuel capacitized situation. If I could, I've got so many miles, I really, really want this tank, but uh, I don't think we're going to get there. I cut this line here and I ran air uh, through the line forward and sure enough no restrictions there. Everything's fine. So then I ran it right here and I can't get anything through here which tells me the pickup tube and there's a sock on it full of varnish and rust. This tank is bust basically. Another cool thing, this was parked for brake issues over here on this side. Um, that's what we suspect through the son of the old owner and I think he might have fixed them. I got to be honest, look at this. Brand new line, up over, new soft line, I mean obviously it was installed years ago, but he might have been in here and was it just a leaking line or is the actual caliper bad? Now I'm not seeing any new brake juice from our drive here. So is that now resolved and he just never got it off the blocks? <laughs> I don't know. I really don't. We got a transmission pan leak. Pretty bad one. I don't want to get a fur on the way back. That's just from sitting here for a couple minutes. So I'm going to get up here and see what I did wrong. I don't know if I got the gasket in incorrectly. It doesn't look like I did, but I did this in the dark last night. So I'm just Doing some warranty work on myself. That's always fun. <laughs> Not really. Exhaust is good. I don't see anything wrong anywhere there. Floors are solid in this, which is, I, you know what I mean? I just, okay, got it. Okay, we've been working on the fuel system here. The Ecto-1 Back to the Future look is perfect. This is perfectly executed with the service loop, I'll have you know. Uh, I fished this up here, I used one of those reflector poles, jammed it down there, taped on, pulled back, got her, you know, put on with special fittings here. Those seem to be holding. Now, we insulated the sad cable. Actually, I'm gonna do this the other way. I'm gonna tape up the positives and we'll be switching the SAD cables, so that'll always be connected. Then we'll just connect and disconnect this when we need and when we don't need the pump. I'm gonna run two cans up here. I'm gonna run the left one first, so when I see that getting low, I can pull out my fishing pole, stick it in the other one, and should be good to go. As long as this intermittent, weird, digital, lightning, dura, spark box stuff, hangs in there we might could got a shot I don't know but like I say it runs that's probably a win in itself it's out it's clean we drove it down the road that's pretty awesome something else I did here tonight just kind of preparing for night driving because I'm thinking if I get this started in the morning we can't shut it off once it runs we shut it off that's when we lose spark for whatever weird reason so I've got this jumped into the headlights here and that's how we're going to get our headlights on and off. I don't know if it's a foot switch or the dash switch. We just don't have time or the parts to figure that out. So I do this pretty regularly. Just jump it over and get you home and do the thing. I did pick up a charging whirler. That one's pretty weak. And if we do night driving with all the lamps and everything running, I have a feeling that is not going to cut it. But I guess that's going to do it for in the shop tonight. I'm going to get a little bit of rest. We're going to pack up, get the luggage in the car, and hit the road tomorrow morning. 650 miles. We're going to start weaving through some back roads at first. If the car is performing well, we might start eventually getting on some faster highways. and Maybe even the interstate. I'm not quite sure. 
Hopefully this thing is going to make it. I have no backup plans whatsoever. We'll see you in the morning. Well, good morning. Beautiful day in Iowa. Planking. No spark. Went to fire it up this morning. Not only does it have the same intermittent issues as yesterday and the day before and the day before that. I believe the day before that. But it's more worse -er now. And it's doing this weird thing where you try to crank it. And when you let off the key, it fires for a second and stops. I'm not sure if it's the actual ignition tumbler, if it's the rack and the steering column, if it's some sort of sensor or ECM or PCM or UCM or DCM. I, I don't know. We're going to try a few different things here, see if we can get this fired up. I do get it running. Basically then the challenge is, can we go 650 miles without ever stalling or turning this car off, including when fueling somehow out of jugs? <laughs> Sweet. Well, we got it fired up. I uh, take up wires, put the old coil back in, even all that. Uh, Ohmed out, not correct, and it fired up. I'm wondering if the new coil doesn't require a resistor, but there's one in line, but the old one does require a resistor, and there is one in line. And I'm not sure, because I can't find a wiring diagram for this vehicle. Of course, you can find them for DuraSpark, but they're just general DuraSpark. It's not the Mercedes, which has a bunch of computer boxes and other stuff in it. So, I'm going to let it warm up so it doesn't stall when I put it in gear. We're going straight to the fuel station. we got to keep this thing running at all times. Also, with everything going on, I forgot to put belts on this. And they are in terrible well, that's good, you know? You know, just, uh, just the usual. Nothing, nothing to see here. There's an O'Reilly's about 40 miles from here. And I called ahead. They do have an ignition coil and they have a belt. So that's going to be our first destination. There's also going to be fuel in town. It's a little bit out of the way south, but we got to get that stuff. Just make sure we have it on board and then take off from there. That's gonna do it for me today anyway. It's uh, about 10 and a half hours in the car. We didn't cover a lot of ground there in the beginning. Car kept quitting just randomly and stuff like that. And I was taking back roads, but it started running better engine wise. So I jumped around the interstate. And we just clipped 70 for a good, good bit there. Transmission is still extremely questionable. Air conditioning has faded. Power steering is still working. I will say that the engine it is much more responsive. It is running much better. I always say, you just got to get her on the road, blow the cobwebs out of her filler. You know what I mean? It works. I ain't kidding you. It's getting about 16 miles to the gallon. I can't even tell you how many times I stopped and filled up today, but we're doing pretty good. I wanted to also stop because 10 and a half hours today, that means that car has not shut off for 10 and a half hours, meaning I haven't checked the oil or the coolant or any of that stuff. So I'm gonna get a break for Sally Lassus is gonna get a break in the morning. Hopefully it'll have spark. We'll check some fluids, we'll fire this thing back up and we'll push on home. We're pretty close. We got like 200 miles left or something like that. I, I'd have to look, but anyway, we'll see you guys bright and early tomorrow morning. Good morning, day 
72.12, whatever it is, early 9 or o'clock, 8, whatever it is, it's early in the morning, you know what I'm saying? I can't believe it, but I guess I got to, I'm looking right at it, no one stole the Versailles. And obviously that's the car to steal around here, you know, luxury, it's a mid-sized luxury car, everybody, it's got power seats and windows. Anyway, today's the day. Let's see if we get back. I did the mapping on the digital pocket computer box. 227 miles on the intro states. If you take the back roads, well, it's more. I don't know what's going to happen today. No leaks underneath the rig. That's okay. I'm going to pop the hood. We'll go through a couple things here. I did disco this yesterday. This poor little battery. First of all, it's undersized. Second of all, it's... it's the economy not you know heavy duty by any means and i beat on this thing like a bullnose forward trying to get the radio to work you know the old dash boom boom so hopefully it's still got juice this morning fuel lines working this is i left that in there because i figured we'd have issues on the way everything else yep there's an engine oh there we go the clutch blew it out on the on the AC, completely blew out. You can see rubber and debris down under there. So I'm actually going to cut this belt, which as you can see, I have no idea how it even stayed on any of these belts. I didn't touch them. I've just been waiting for them to come off. I do have a charger whirler belt. I don't really care about the power stern, but everything else, is look yep mm -hmm. check okay yeah it's cold so we can just look at the stick oh hasn't even barely used any oil that's incredible it actually doesn't smoke to be honest unless you really feed her the onions it does have a little bit of blow by actually i don't know now we ran it all day yesterday let's fire it up and see what the blow by looks like see if the rings are sealing up I'll also check on this. Ice cube juice. Plum full. It ain't eating that either. Okay. Well, let's fire it. If it starts, it runs all day once again. NASCAR fuel system running. Let's go two and a half. Okay. Please have spark. Nope. Oh, here we go. Oh no. I need to save some battery. We might be in trouble here, fellas. Oh boy. Well, this, this is what I was afraid of. Hindsight being 13, 12, maybe I should have just slept in the car. Actually, I did think about that, but on account of the exhaust being rotted off where my feet are, I was a little worried about the carbon monoxide poisonings. Oh boy. This battery ain't gonna last much longer. <laughs> Great. Well, I think I got sparkles back, changed out the coil again for the old one then a new one a super streak uh, accelerator pump I think is dead this really pains me I'm gonna have to use some of this to fire it off well I know it's a running driving car it should take right off and I don't have to sit there and fog it down with this I only do this in an emergency guys it's so hard on these engines well, we'll see what happens here come on yeah, should be able to get it. Woo! That was a little scary, but I forgot to take off that belt. Huh. Oh my goodness. I thought I was going to be stuck over here in Kentucky or wherever we is. 
see if I can get that thing off somehow. Got that off by just holding this on there. Whoop. Alternator sounds terrible this morning. Oh, that belt's starting to go. See that? There it went, right there. The alternator is, well, <laughs> I guess we're putting a belt on. I gotta shut this off again. No! You know, if you've never worked on a car in a hotel parking lot, I strongly recommend it, especially if you wanna make new friends, because, you know, Pretty soon here, there's going to be about 30 people standing around and going, what are, you, what are you doing here, fella? Is that a Lincoln Versailles? I say, yeah. They're going to say, mid-size luxury. Yeah. This one's a good unit. I think all I need is these two. I have a 9 forward slash 1 6. What a beautiful day. Western omelet sounds good. Hope it doesn't rain, though. Ain't got wipers. Guy's got some old school 50 cent plan. Anyway, I barely got this belt on here. The size was not correct. But loosened up, got all the way to the end of the adjustment. Got it about halfway on the pulley and then used the rotation of the engine. Held my finger on it, bumped the trigger, not recommended. And I walked it on. I mean, it is not it is taunt. You could walk between buildings on that thing. But I ain't even got it adjusted. Don't need to. So I'll just snug it down. Hopefully fire this thing back up. Find my wing nut. Get to a gas station. We're in business. Time to pack. By the way, that blow by, all but gone. So I knew I could feel it and hear it running better. As we drove it yesterday, and there's the proof. The rings have sealed. It's got more gusto, it's a lot more snappy than it was. We're charging. I'll pack up. Get back on the road. Alright, first fill up of the day. Beautiful weather. I think I'm going to jump on the interstate. Try that out today again. Everything seems to be going good. Lug nuts are staying on. These cheapo tires are not bad, actually. Gotta be honest. should be a familiar sight. The golden loxes of Rusty Acres. We made it somehow, some way. The 1978 Lincoln Versailles. After 22 years sitting in that garage, drug itself 650 miles all the way down to southern Tennessee. And it quite honestly did great. If you think about it, we didn't put bearings in it or a brake pad for that matter. I kind of just forced it along the way and I teased this car a little bit and forward a little bit maybe I don't know but I got to be honest Lincoln made a really great product if you think about it when I typically drag cars out that have been sitting 20 30 years 
I have to go through air. It's a lot of work. And we really didn't have to do that to this one. And it needs some stuff, a fuel system, fuel lines, and we still got to put brake lines in it. And it needs an AC pump. And we got to figure out this electrical issue and yada, yada. But the most important thing for me is the car is on the road. It's proven. It could be a classic. It could be a cruiser. It could be something. I just don't want the thing parted out. So you guys let me know what you want to do with this car. Maybe we just pass her on to somebody else and uh, they could continue the restoration. Rusty Acres is getting pretty full, I'll tell you that. Thanks guys for watching another successful revival here at Vice Grip Garage. Appreciate you all very much. And remember, your project won't work if you don't. We'll see you soon. Did I turn the fuel pump off? Oh, I think I did. <laughs>